Hey, welcome back everyone. Bruce here with DIY Homestead Projects. I've been TIG welding for three or three or four years now. Just self-taught, learning off the internet. And uh, I've always been sharpening my tungsten with a four and a half inch angle grinder and just a grinding wheel. Chuck up my tungsten into my drill and then run that on the uh, grinding wheel to get a sharpened point on my tungsten. And for the past three, three and a half years, it's been working fine for me, as far as I know. <laughs> but I wanted to show you, Yes Welder sent me a product that they offer, and, and a lot of companies make this particular item. This is an electric tungsten sharpener or tungsten grinding tool, specifically designed for sharpening tungsten. I've always been curious about it. This particular one happens to be a corded version. It runs off of 110 volts or 120 volts plugs into a regular house outlet, which I have plenty of outlets available to me in my shop here, so it's not a big deal. This is one of the cheaper ones that I've seen advertised. There's all different types. Some you adapt. You can put them on a Dremel tool or standalone units like this one itself. Some of them are up to a thousand dollars. I've never used one up until when I received this one from Yeswalder. I just wanted to show it to you. I'm sure some of you guys out there are being curious as to whether or not you need a tungsten grinder. Is it worth it? How how good of a job does it do? Uh, but I do have to say, after using it just a little bit here in the shop prior to making the video, it is really handy. Tick welding for a living in a professional setting, it's probably a more critical item because you can get a consistent grind on the tungsten time after time after time. So you're your tungsten grind is going to dictate what type of arc you get from your, your TIG torch. And it can affect penetration and width of the bead and, and so forth. But as a, you know amateur TIG welder or a hobbyist TIG welder, such as myself, that may not be as critical as it is if you're in a professional environment. It's pretty cool. I've enjoyed using it. So let me bring you in here a little, little closer and I'll show you a few things about it. This particular one, corded, it has about a six foot cord on it, runs off 110 volts, has an on off switch, and then it's a variable speed motor in here. And it says on the side here from 2000 to 18,000 RPMs, takes up to a one amp. Okay, I'll leave links for this as well as a 10% off coupon code. I'll put that all in the description if you want to go check it out for yourself. As far as I can tell it's a fixed angle and I think it's 22 and a half degrees according to some other information that I read about this Yes Welder model. It's got a slot here. You can put your tungsten in here and use the edge of that blade to cut your tungsten so you're not breaking it and getting uh, fractures and splits in the end of the tungsten. You can use it to cut off a bald tip or a q-tip if you dip your tungsten real bad or you hit that with a filler wire it'll put a ball on the end of there you may not want. You can use that to cut it off with and then resharpen it. It has three different sizes, 16th, 1 8th and 3 30 seconds and they are adjustable with different size collets. I call it a collet, I don't know what it's called but I have the 3 30 second and then you've got two other storage locations here. You've got a 16th and a 1 8 inch. And then three holes here on the top where you can run that tungsten right down in there and it'll hit that blade and put a flat tip or a, take the point off of your tungsten. Like if you're going to weld aluminum maybe a lot of guys will like to go with a flat tip. And that fits in there pretty precise. This is a 3 30 seconds inch tungsten that I'm using here for the demo. And then I don't know if you can see it on the video or not, but you can look right in this window here on the side. And as you put your tungsten in there, you can kind of watch it as it gets ground to the angle that it's set at and see when you're done so you're not grinding off a lot of extra tungsten that's not necessary and just wasting it. It's uh, not too loud. <laughs> There's the 2000 RPM. There's the 18,000. I've just run it, been running about halfway, halfway in between there, so 7,000, 10,000, somewhere around there. Comes with three uh, Allen keys. One of them fits to remove and insert the collets. 
Another one will be used to adjust, and you can adjust this wheel. There's kind of a wide opening here where, it, where your tungsten goes through there. So you can adjust that wheel to different positions and kind of use the full face of that cutting disc. So if it gets wore out in one spot, you're using it all the time, you can adjust that and move it over so it's rubbing on a different spot on that wheel. And then the last Allen key fits in the side here so that you can adjust, or not adjust, but you can remove these two side screws. Actually not screws, they're bolts. To remove the top and replace the cutting wheel. Then that just slips off the top. That's a one inch diamond cutting wheel and it's double sided. So once you wear out one side you can flip it over and it just has a little small screw, uh, Allen screw there and that's what the tiny one's for to remove that blade. Just like a Dremel tool it's got a stop here. You hold this button down while you unscrew that so it holds the uh, shaft of the motor in position. Replace the blade or flip it over and put it back on and then put your cutting head back on there. Just with those two bolts. Real, real simple. It's actually a real Real simple tool. I'm really kind of shocked as to the price of the tool. This one, like I said, is one of the cheaper ones that I've seen for sale. This one's uh, currently, at the time I'm making the video, $249, I believe, is what the Yes Welder has it for on their website. With the 10% off, you can get it for about two and a quarter, $225. And they go on up to a Maybe a little more adjustability where you have, where you have an angle gauge on the side and you can adjust the uh, the angle maybe a little more precisely than you can with this one. I'll show you a little trick here in a second. Something I found out a way to uh, get some varying angles out of this one. But uh, those are like a thousand bucks. Eight hundred, seven, eight thousand dollars, which is quite a bit of money in my opinion. But anyway, for $225, $250, that's what Yes Welder sells this one for. Um, yeah, let me show you. And I'll zoom the camera in so you can see a little bit better maybe here. But what I noticed, this tungsten fits in here. And it does have just a little bit of play. So maybe that's where they're getting the variance on the uh, angle. If you push down on the top of it as you slide it in there, like you're, like in my case, of pulling back on it, I can get a more shallow angle. Or if I push up on it, I can get a steeper angle. And I think I read somewhere 10 to 30 degree di difference or variation. Maybe that's where they're getting the variation. Honestly, I don't know. But uh, what you can do is take this. It depends on the size of the tungsten, but with a 3 seconds tungsten, if you put the 1 8 inch collet in here, then you've got a quite a bit of play and you can get a much greater angle. And I'll show you a picture of another one that I did with the 1 8 inch collet holding up on this to get the, the steepest angle I could and the difference between the two, the 22 and a half angle which is what I'm going to just try because I can get that with the 330 seconds call it just standard. I don't have to push or pull or anything. Just push it in there. I do keep it all the way to the top just so I have a consistent grind on it and I can make it the same every time. But uh, the difference between, a, I don't know, it might be a 30 and a 22 and a half on the uh, two different grinds that I got using the different call it. But there are some benefits to uh, to a tool like this. One is the convenience. It's really nice. I don't have to take my tungsten out of the uh, torch, chuck it up in my drill bit, and then hold that on my grinding wheel trying to get a consistent angle. And I never could get a consistent angle. The more I did it, the, the more consistent I could get. But I was never, you know, exact. So every time I put that tungsten back in my TIG torch and uh, would weld with it, at first, I had no clue. 
when I was brand new, I, I, I couldn't tell the difference anyway. So for a brand spanking new person, maybe it's not, not noticeable. But as you start to get some experience with your TIG welding, you're going to start to be able to notice small differences like that. And the more experience you get, I've got a long way to go, the more experience you get, the, uh, the more you'll be able to notice. But I think I'm to the point now where I can tell a difference. And it would be beneficial to be able to consistently grind my tungsten, whatever angle it happens to be, to the same angle every time. You know, you dip it, which I do every time I weld. Every time I TIG weld, I've got to resharpen a tungsten. Um, you're not going to wear out your grinding wheels. If you're using a bench grinder with a sanding wheel or a, a grinding wheel in it, that's dedicated to grinding your tungsten, you'll eventually wear a groove in it unless you move it around all the time. So that could cost some money having to replace those wheels. I've been using, I've tried flap discs with a finer grit so I get a smoother, a smoother grind on the tungsten. And, uh, and, and grinding tungsten on a flap disc, in my experience, it goes through them pretty quick. It won't be long and you'll have a pretty good groove worn out on your uh, flap disc and then of course you re got to replace it but uh, that just depends on your technique anyway it's going to be real nice to have a, a consistent grind every single time and this puts a really smooth grind on there and then it's real simple just to put it in that hole on the top turn your machine on just touch that to the wheel to get yourself a nice flat spot which I want to try some of that with flat spot and see how that does on some aluminum. Anyway, I want to show you guys this new tool. It's not a real long video here. I probably talked about it a lot more than necessary because there's not a whole lot to it. It's a pretty simple tool made by Yes Welder. I'll put, uh, again, purchase links and, and, uh, and a coupon code in the description so you can get 10% off. So swing over to Yes Welder, have a look at it if you're interested in this type of thing. And we'll see you guys on the next video.